In this video, I'm gonna show you how to become a giant and play with your tire boat in public river. So let's get started. Hey, what's up guys? My name is Droel and welcome to another video by Tutorials Junction. And as you can see, this is the final output and this is the base image. So the basic idea is we have a girl sitting here and she put her toy boat here and now she's watching it go. That's it. So to create the effect, let's go to the file here. I will not try to replicate my original work, rather I will show you my approach like what I did to achieve the final output that I wanted. So first thing, let's just go and unlock the background, close it. Now if you look at the image here, as you can see, there is a lot of detail that we can bring out. So first thing, make a copy of it, Control J. So we have this for the backup. Okay, so activate this image and then go to image adjustment and then go to shadows and highlights. Okay, so first thing, let's go and adjust the shadows. After that, go to your highlights and here I will try to bring them down a little bit. So as you can see, now we have lots of details back from the cloud and also adjust your tonal width. Okay, now go and hit OK. After that, I wanted to get rid of all of this blue color from the image and give it more summery feeling. So for that, uh, create a new adjustment layer and I got a selective colors. Here, first thing, obviously, I went to my cyan because that's what I want to get rid of. So I reduced my cyan uh, and at the same time, I added a little bit of yellow. And I also added a little bit of black uh, for more contrast in the clouds and a little bit here. Uh, after that, go to your blues. Uh, here, I first of all increased my yellow, as you can see here. And then I added a little bit of cyan because uh, I'm also gonna go to my neutrals and here I will add the yellow. So we need a little bit of blue, you know, uh, so it doesn't go way over the top. So I think somewhere around 19 is fine. Uh, let's go and play with the cyan. Uh, so I think minus 3 is good. So that's it for changes. I'm gonna go and close it. After that, I wanted to give it an overall tone. So for that best solution was go to your adjustment and it was color lookup as you can see here. Uh, we have lots of presets and so the one I used was fall colors as you can see here. So I just apply the fall colors and that's it. I didn't change anything. So this is the image we started with and this is where we are. So we are a bit closer. Actually, we can adjust it a little bit more. So go to your selective colors and here in the neutrals, let's go and remove cyan a little bit more so we can have a bit more stronger effect. Uh, so I think somewhere around 13 is fine. Let's go and close it. So I think this looks much better. Now I have the look I want for the background and I can finally add the model. So for that, I'm just gonna go and simply grab the model from my original document. Uh, from here, let's go and drop her here. Uh, and okay, we good. I'm gonna go and put her on the top. Okay. So as you can see, I used pen tool to cut out the model and the, in the original image, she looks something like this. So I used pen tool uh, and you can try using magnetic lasso, but it didn't work very good. Uh, so after I done my, I was done with my selection, I applied the layer mask, so I have full control. Okay, so I'm gonna activate my layer mask. So as you can see, I kept a little bit of water here uh, and the rest is just general cutout. So first thing, let's make her bigger, control T. Uh, oops, close it. I'm gonna activate my model, then again press Ctrl T uh, and make her bigger. Okay, big enough. After that, I wanted to blend my model properly in the water. So it ex actually looks like that she is in there. So what I did, uh, when I did my cutout, I kept a little bit of water so I have the idea. After that, I activated my layer mask here. Uh, I grabbed my brush tool from here and in the opacity, I changed it to, first of all, I kept it 100%, sorry. Uh, activated layer mask and first of all, I got rid of all of this area. As you can see, you can paint with black color and my brush is 0% hard, okay? It has to be really soft. So I went and removed uh, all the hard edges from here. That is done, but as you can see, it still doesn't look like that model is in there. So what I did after that, I went and I changed my opacity to somewhere around like 20%, 25%. And now I started painting it back. So I changed my color to white and then I started bringing some of the details back. So it looks like that the model is actually in there, you know, under the water. Uh, and I also rebuilt a little bit of parts from the water, especially around the leg, as you can see here. Now I'm gonna paint it back.
pretty good after that i wanted to match the perspective of the model as you can see uh, we can adjust the angle a little bit better so activate your model layer uh, control t so we can have this things here after that i rotated her a little bit uh, so that's perfect then right click here and where is it go with perspective so it will allow you to adjust every single corner uh, properly so i went and i started adjusting it properly now go and confirm it so now if i press ctrl z as you can see now the depth is a lot better and the model uh, fits in the same properly you can spend more time and get it exactly how you want so that's done now if i zoom in as you can see there is a shade of green everywhere on skin clothes hair everywhere and that is because in original picture the model is surrounded in green water so what i did i went and created new adjustment layer and selected hue saturation and turned on my clipping mask so any changes i do it will stay on the model right so uh, make it zero uh, then i went to my green tones and here i made the saturation all the way up to zero and close it so now if i zoom in here uh, and if i turn this on and off as you can see uh, here the shade of green that's gone and we have a simple that match with background after that i applied the same color lookup Go to your adjustment layer and get a color lookup but this time I turned on clipping mask so it only stays on the model and then I went in and I went for where is it the fall colors and close it. So now the colors look much more similar and then I wanted to adjust the contrast of the model so I went and created another adjustment layer and went to selective colors. Uh, then of course turned on clipping mask so it will only affect the model. Then I went to my neutrals and here I reduced the black. Then go and close it. So now if I turn it on and off, the contrast looks better. Let's adjust it a bit more. Go and close it. Now if I zoom in, as you can see, because I used pen tool, this edges look really sharp and the hair doesn't look very good. So activate layer mask of your model, right click and go for refine mask. And here I just simply went and painted on the edges carefully. Now as you can see hair looks more fuzzy and little bit realistic and this is the best you can do with refine edge. If you want even better output I will recommend grab a brush tool and paint with this uh, edges properly. We have a lot of default br uh, hair brushes so use them. I'm gonna hit ok uh, and I think now the hair looks fine. So the model is done, perspective is ok, the, she blends in water, the colors are fine. After then, uh, I realized that th this is the place where I will put the sun. So we need a little bit of shadow. So now we have to create shadow under the model. So I'm going to create a new layer and this will be actually under my model and rename it. And now I'm going to show you a simple trick. Uh, go and grab your what do you call polygon lasso tool and make a selection something like this. The selection is ready now i can go and grab my paint bucket tool from here and simply go here and paint in the black color uh, then go to select uh, here and deselect now the shadow obviously looks terrible so first thing i did was went and reduce the opacity so it starts blending a little bit more good then right click and convert to smart object so we can apply some filters so then go to filter blur and here we have gaussian blur and apply a little bit of blur focus on your edges here looks good enough then go and hit ok after then i applied a layer mask here so that i can erase certain parts and grab my brush tool make it really big like pretty freaking big something like this and paint with black color and make sure opacity is 100 percent then go and start removing a little bit of shadow from here and there So as you can see now the shadow looks much natural and I also reduced the opacity a little bit to blend in a little bit more. So the shadow is done and now we can add some reflection. So for that activate your model layer because we need it for the reflection. And the first thing I will do is press Ctrl J. Once you have to copy, go and select the bottom one. Here first thing go and rename it. So we don't have any confusion. After then right click here and select rasterize layer so you can apply the layer mask. So now I can select my layer mask, right click and get apply layer mask. So I get rid of the layer mask and I only have this cut out. We good? So after that go and press Ctrl T uh, on the reflection, right click and select flip vertical. Uh, so we have something like this. Then go and rotate it from the corner. 
uh, and try to match it uh, with this okay that looks good enough go and confirm it first thing go and change the blending mode to soft light uh, and then reduce the opacity somewhere around like 50 percent we have to blend it a little bit more so for that i went to my image adjustment and hue saturation here first thing i did i got rid of a lot of colors i made it somewhere around like uh, 525 and also i got rid of some of the lightness to make it you know blend with water better so minus 29 uh, looks okay so as you can see the difference okay we are doing surprisingly good till now so after that i wanted to create some shadows on the hand face and places uh, so i went and created a new blank layer and i put it on top of everything exactly here and rename it now it's super easy uh, grab your brush tool black color and make the opacity somewhere around like 10 percent don't go higher than that okay you can ruin the image and then wherever you see these dark parts go and start painting in there And one important tip I forgot to tell you that before you start painting, right click and where is it? Convert to clipping mask. So now when I paint anything, it will stay on top of model. As you can see, let's make the opacity full so you can see. Everything will stay on model. If you don't do that, it will go everywhere and it will make your life pretty difficult. So let's go and start painting. Okay, so this is, looks good enough and whenever you paint the shadow, keep in mind that this takes a lot of time and takes some practice. So don't worry if it doesn't look very good in first try. Okay, now let's go and create some rim lighting because the sun is here, we need a little bit of lighting on the hair, on the body here. So for that, create a new blank layer and rename it rim light. After that, right click here and make it a clipping mask so whatever we paint stays here. And in my colors, as you can see, we have this really dark orangish color that's almost brown. Uh, so this is the color, hit OK. Then go and change the blending mode to color dodge and go and start painting wherever you need the rim light. So as you can see, now the hair look really cool. Uh, in. Okay, so I think this looks good enough, but we need to reduce some opacity. So I'm gonna go and make it somewhere around like, you know, 60%. Uh, and now if I turn it on and off, the lighting looks much better. And it will start fitting together once we add the sun here. So this is fine. Okay, so everything related model is almost done, uh, except one thing. Let's go and create new layer. And you will not make it a clipping mask because we need a shadow that joins model and water together. So it needs to be in both places. So grab your brush tool and make the opacity that regular, you know, 15, 20% and grab your black color from here and start painting here. Uh, make your brush a bit bigger and paint here to blend these things to, to. Let's turn it on and off. Okay, we can reduce some opacity. Uh, let's keep it somewhere around 60% and now if I turn it on now. And again, it's a shadow. Take your time to paint it properly. Okay, now everything related model is done and now we can start working on the background a little bit. So for that, I'm gonna go and create a, create a new blank layer from here. And the first thing, let's go and add the sun. So I'm gonna go and name it sun. And here I'm gonna go and grab my paint bucket tool, right click paint bucket and fill in the black color. Uh, go to filter, render and go and select the lens flare. Uh, here I'm gonna get this third one because it has the least detail and let's keep it somewhere around here. Uh, you know what let's keep it in center so we don't have that flaring line uh, keep it in center hit ok then go and change the blending mode to screen the standard stuff we do every time press ctrl T uh, and make it smaller and put the sun here son of a sun okay confirm it now as you can see if I zoom in we have this little bit of lining going on that is because of our layer so what we can do is just simply grab the eraser tool from here, right click eraser and make it pretty big, more bigger than we need and make the opacity 100, hardness 0% and then you can just simply erase these lines away. Cool, now let's go and add some colors. So for that image adjustment uh, and then go and select hue saturation. Here first of all make it colorize and then increase the saturation so you can see the colors and then change the hue to make it orange. 
good now go and hit ok actually you know what let's adjust the sun a little bit so it matches you know what do you call the shadow properly uh, so let's keep it somewhere around here okay that's good enough now since we added the sun we can add some little bit of lighting effect here on this building a little bit on this merry-go-round so for that go and create a new blank layer from here and name it environment light and here grab your brush tool and grab an orange color somewhere from the sun okay not good enough i'm gonna go and manually grab a color okay so this is dark enough hit okay uh, change the blending mode to where is it color touch uh, and start painting where you need the lighting effect and also make the opacity 100% we will reduce it later but when you paint keep it on 100 Okay, environmental lighting is done, but it's way too intense. So I'm gonna go and reduce the opacity until it blends in properly. And now we can finally add the boat. And actually in the boat, it's exact same process as the model. Almost nothing is different. Let me show you. Go to file, go to place, and grab your this toy boat image, uh, place it. Now first thing I will do is confirm it, uh, right click and rasterize it. So I can get rid of all these uh, logos. Uh, so grab your eraser tool and remove them so that's gone and now i'm gonna start working on the boat and think of it as kind of a recap for the model because this is basically same stuff so Control t And the thing about board is try to keep it under your model so right on top of this color lookup so you can also have this little bit of shadow effect like the shadow of model is also covering a uh, half of the board so it looks a bit more realistic and before we get lost in the confusion let's group all of this so select your shadow and i think till layer one it's all model so hold your shift key and click on layer one so everything selected Control g to group it and rename it model okay now it's a bit easy to understand activate your ship and let's move it a bit more in the shadow okay shadow is done now let's start painting on the boat so for that activate ship go and create new layer on top of that rename it okay that's enough painting now go and reduce the opacity to blend it properly so yeah at 50% it looks fine uh, I also added a gradient on boat yes so this is the boat activate boat layer right click and go to blending options so you can add a gradient so go for go with gradient overlay activate it and adjust the angle in a way the top portion is the brightest and bottom is darkest and I think 90 works completely fine you can adjust it manually a touch more okay so that's fine after that go and change its blending mode to soft light so now if i turn it on and off there's a little bit more depth in the boat and then you can reduce the opacity a touch uh, so i think 70 80 is good hit okay you know what let's go and reduce the opacity of the shadow a little bit more i think we went way too overboard uh, so i think uh, 25 percent looks fine now we have to add a contact shadow Okay, so everything is in group and to create the water ripples, here's the trick I used. Uh, obviously, first I uh, downloaded the water ripple brushes, as you can see here. And the brush I used is the first one, this. Uh, and first I tried, I created a new blank layer and I went with, you know, white color and tried painting it. But it just didn't look good. Let's make the 100%. And I tried painting, but it didn't work out the way I wanted. So what I did... Is I grabbed my background layer this one a layer 0 copy and I made a copy of it 
So press Ctrl J and rename it Ripples. And then I went and changed the blending mode of this layer to multiply. So it will look something like this and after that apply a layer mask. But when you apply the layer mask, hold your Alt key and then apply it. So it will already apply a blank layer mask. After then make sure you have selected your brush tool and you have this ripple brush and change your color to white. So now whenever I paint on this layer, it will reveal the data. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a simple click here. But right now the perspective of the brush is wrong. So we're gonna adjust that. Go and click on this little icon here. And do you see these two dots here? They allow you to rotate the brush in third dimension. So I'm gonna go and squeeze it a little bit from here. So I think now this matches a lot better. So go and do a click here. Uh, okay, let's go a little bit here. Okay. And after that, I'm gonna change my brush and do a little bit more clicks. So everything is done and now we can finally do some color correction. So for that, go and create a new adjustment layer and select Vibrance. So we can boost some of the colors. So I'm gonna go and make it somewhere around like 70-80%. Uh, 74 looks fine, go and close it. And after that, go and create another adjustment layer and get a selective color. And here I'm gonna go to my yellows and add a little bit of yellows. And then I'm gonna go to my reds and add a little bit of red. And then I'm gonna go to my cyans and then go and add a bunch of cyans. And then also reduce the yellow from your cyans a little bit and add a little bit of blacks. Then I'm gonna go to my blues and add a little bit of blues. And then add a little bit of blacks. And then finally, I'm gonna go to my blacks and make it minus 10 in the blacks. Looking pretty good, now go and close it. Okay, now we are almost done. The last thing is go and create a new blank layer from here and then press Ctrl, Alt, Shift and E. So it will just basically create a JPG of your document. After that, I'm gonna go to image, adjustment, and go to shadows and highlights. In the shadows and highlights, uh, I'm gonna go and get that really flat look that I want. So I made the amount of shadow zero, and then I'm gonna reduce the radius of my highlights. By the way, if you cannot see these options and it looks something like this, go and click on show more options so you can see it. Uh, now let's go and change it. So in the, my highlight is 6, 62 and 162 uh, and in the midtone contrast I'm gonna go and keep it you know somewhere around like 5. Okay that looks good then go and hit OK. So that's it and this is the final output and I really hope that you guys learned something from this video and if you did hit that like button and if you have any kind of questions or suggestions uh, you can ask me in comment section below. Uh, if you're new here you can click on any of these boxes to check out more videos by me plus you can also subscribe to my channel so every time I upload a new video you will get the updates. Also clicking on that subscribe button will take you to my YouTube channel where I have tons of tutorials just waiting for you. So till then goodbye, take care and have some fun with Photoshop.